It comes to myself. And some people need to understand the history a little bit better. So, the Great Migration happened between 1910 and 1970. When 1.5 million black people moved from the south to the north because of the fact you couldn't do anything in the south besides die and be shit upon, basically. These are the dates. Significant things happen in sports. The first, I'm going to go back to the top. 1916, the Rose Bowl was the first integrated football game with one black player when Brown faced Washington State. 37, Syracuse benched his one black player to accommodate the man by Maryland who lost 13 to nothing. That one black player later served as a pilot for Tuskegee Airmen in World War II. The next year, Syracuse played as one black player and beat Maryland 53-0. 1940, Boston College accepted a bid for the Cotton Bowl, conditioned on benching as one black player. See where this is going? 1941, the Sugar Bowl, Boston College again accepted the bid, conditioned and benched as one black player. 47, the player of the Penn State football team rejected the invitation for the Orange Bowl on the condition it not play as two black players. Also 47, Harvard and Virginia played the first integrated football game in the South. 1947. 1948, with approval of culture of the Southwest Conference, this became the first integrated bowl game in the South. Penn State, SMU, ended with 13-13 top. 1949, Lafayette turned down invitation for the Sun Bowl on condition that bench is one black player. 1950, Miami lifted his ban of integrated football games. From 1943, they invited Syracuse without conditions. Alabama accepted invitation thinking Syracuse's one black player who had suffered an injury during regular season wouldn't play. And under orders from the president of the school to leave the field, the Syracuse field at that one black player. 56. They invited Hillside College to Tangerine Bowl. On condition that it benches four black players. Hillside declined. 56. Sugar Bowl invited Pittsburgh without conditions. The other team invited Georgia Tech, allowed his players to decide to accept play, and the team voted unanimously to accept the offer, over protest of everybody. 1959, criticized back home and in the North, recently hired coach Paul Bear Bryant, accepted the bid from the Liberty Bowl knowing his team Alabama will face integrated team. 1960. NAIA Small College title game pitted the team from California against the all-white team from Northern California. Five black players on the California team had to stay at a separate hotel. This is where the numbers are making sense to people in the audience. 1963, the first black player in the ACC to Maryland. 1966, the first black player in the Southwest Conference to Baylor. 1967, the first black player in the SEC at Kentucky. 1970, Alabama scheduled a home game against Southern California, fully aware of mean competing against the integrated team. Southern California run a rough shot over Alabama. The very next day, Coach Bryant asked the board of trustees, Alabama crew play as broad as a color. The very next year, 
played in Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Mississippi. The blacks showed up. But they couldn't play quarterback, receiver, linebacker, or middle linebacker at least. They couldn't play strong safety. Those were thinking man positions. So you still see players before the 1971 Alabama beatdown. HBCUs dominated the line. Jackie Slater's, Hobo Brazil's, people like that. Lanier from Morgan State. These are the players, the time where they dominated because they were not allowed to play at these schools themselves. They, when they migrated, their parents migrated up north during the Great Migration, they played in the northern schools, the Boston Colleges, the uh, Harvest, the Browns, the Michigan, the Ohio State, Clemson, not Clemson, sorry, Syracuse, both orange. It's when these schools dominated. They played up north. When they finally allowed black people to play in the South, it took a while because you still go to those, those games and yes, way on the field, the white people still didn't like it. Black folks weren't really welcome in a crowd to support you. It took one game for that to change. It was not U.S. versus Alabama. It was Miami versus FAMU. Ever since that game, all the players that HBCUs used to get have been targeted by these Power 5 schools. Look at the stadium from the 80s. 40, 50,000 seat stadiums. Now they're 100,000 seat cathedrals. All that wealth was built on the back of these players. Now, the players are coming home. It's only been a week or a year. And now all of a sudden, they want us to say, oh, we're even now. We're not even, not by a long shot. 